Hello everyone and welcome to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Today we'll be exploring the right hands or the southwest side of the city. We'll be meeting five new households as well as exploring the community lots up this side of the city. So first up we have Vragi, Mero, and Hydrun. Now these are more background characters. Vragi is a fisherman and Mero and Hydrun are both NPCs. The little backstory I've made up for these three is that Vragi went on a fishing trip to Alfheim where he met and married Meryl, and then Hydrun is their daughter. Meryl has an interest in alchemy and Hydrun has some artistic talent. I've set up the household to reflect those interests, but because they're both busy with their NPC duties, I've left the skills at a low level. And as you can see here now, the weather has turned. It's fall or autumn and we've got our first frost of the year. It looks very pretty on the mountains, I think. And now to have a look at the commercial lots up this side of the city. First we have one of the tourney tents lifted from the Dragon Valley world. I haven't done much to this, just paved the ground and plot the tent down. And then we have this small park here. It's called the Bifrost Gardens, and in my mind, that's for people who want to hang out somewhere pretty and keep an eye out for new arrivals in Asgard. And this house here next door to Vragi is a base camp. I use the, I don't know how you even pronounce it, I've only ever read it, the N-R-A-A-S mods, and um, I use Traveler a lot, so most of my worlds are simultaneously homes and uh, holiday destinations, so whenever I build or edit a world, I tend to add a base camp to it so that there's always somewhere for my traveling sims to land when they arrive. There's a little beach down here for fishing or for whatever. And next we're going to meet Fandral and the, this time, somewhat less responsible adults that I've designed for his backstory. He's got a single mother and she's got a boyfriend who's a bit of a layabout. That's not a knock against single mothers or anything, this particular fictional one just happens to have terrible taste in men. Half the point of The Sims is the character drama and Fandral's prospective father-in-law is definitely a source for that. I mean, just look at this little man cave that he's gotten set up in his girlfriend's house, it's not even his house. But yeah, he's a low-ranking member of Asgard's army, and she's another NPC. So next up is Volstag. He's the only one of the Warriors 3 that I've decided to start off as an adult, because in the comics, I believe he had a lot of children. So I've paired him off with a wife and given them their firstborn so far, as well as both of them having the surrounded by family lifetime wish. And back to those NRAAS mods that I use, the website that I get them from also has a lot of career mods, including fun things like Assassin, which is going to be useful later. But for Hildegrind here, I've used the Homemaker career from that set. And as you can see, this house has been set up with a playroom and a bedroom for one child. But as they have more, they can always move things around and have maybe two kids to a room or something like that. And Volstag himself is a member of Asgard's army. I use the basic military career for that. I tried to make my own warrior career, but I followed the tutorial. I had no idea what I was doing, and I still have no idea what I did wrong. And next we have a family of, I think it's pronounced Lodzelfer? Light Elves, basically. Uh, they're basically a couple, and they have two kids. The father is a school teacher, the mother is a singer, and the kids go to the nearby school. This is part of my desire to have as many different life states, life stages, career choices as possible represented from the game without breaking the suspension of disbelief of the setting where there's going to be a lot of warriors or military career represented and, you know, you need to have background characters that are exceptions to that rule. 
So we've really no idea what light elves are supposed to look like. They don't appear at all in the movies, and in the mythology they're very loosely described. Uh, so I've decided to base my light elves on a combination of the Lord of the Rings and the Altmer from Skyrim. And now we're going to have a look over here at the school. I basically lifted that straight out of the Dragon Valley world. It's a very elvish feel to it, I think. And here we have the southern of the four main plazas in the city. It consists of a children's play park, although because it's not tagged as a park officially, you can't really expect the Sims to go there on their own accord. You have to tell them that that's where they're supposed to play. Then there's the bookshop, the science research facility, and a combination uh, grocery store and bistro, which covers all of the main rabbit hole type buildings outside of the Royal Palace. And once again, all of these buildings have been lifted from the Dragon Valley world because it's the most, you know, aesthetically close to what I'm going for here. And here we have the festival grounds with all the seasonal entertainment items. I basically designed a single large park with all the layout on the ground, the trees, the lights, and then I used that as a template for both this and the performance park just next to it. And now we meet our final household for the day. It's a group of young adult sims who've decided to form a band. I've always found it kind of hard to picture Asgard without lots of feasting and drinking. And along with that comes dancing and music. So between this band and the singer I introduced you to earlier, there's always going to be someone who you can hire to entertain at events in the royal palace or whatever. So these first two guys here, they're brothers, and I've named them Bard and Elon which is really cheap and easy naming Bard for actually that's his profession and Elon I swiped from Order of the Stick. And the other two are a couple, Gustav and Scotty. I was just using a name generator at this point to be honest. I've given each of the four their own specialized instruments and a reasonable amount of skills so that they can perform whenever they're needed. But honestly they still sound kind of terrible in games so I've downloaded some better music instead of subjecting you to that. And that's it for today. Next week we'll be exploring the far right hand side of the map where we'll be meeting some of the shadier elements of Asgard society. Thanks for watching everyone. Please remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more from me.